Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to introduce Aman Vadud. Aman is a human rights lawyer from Assam, uh, and he defends uh, people whose uh, citizenship has, has been wrongly questioned. Um, in 2019, he co-founded the Justice and Liberty Initiative, uh, which provides pro bono legal aid to many of the marginalized communities on matters of citizenship rights. Uh, it also provides training programs for lawyers who appear before the Foreigners Tribunal in Asham. Uh, just to give you one example of their impact, uh, in March uh, 2020, uh, the Justice and Liberty Initiatives petition in the Supreme Court of India had finally led to the release of 350 detainees across multiple deten detention centers in India. Uh, recently, uh, Aman has also been setting up uh, uh, Samvidhan Kendra or constitution centers across Assam. So far, there have been eight of them in seven districts in Assam. The goal of this uh, project is to take the constitution to the common person um, and also to act as a legal clinic, pro bono legal clinic, which can provide uh, legal services to people from the marginalized communities. Uh, Aman is also a Fulbright scholar at the University of Texas Austin's uh, School of Law. So without further ado, I would uh, welcome Aman for his talk. Thank you so much, uh, Vikas, uh, for your introduction. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, happy Republic Day. Uh, <clears throat> it's a very important uh, occasion for us. This is the day on 26th of January 1950 when uh, our constitution came into effect. Uh, in the beginning, I have heard uh, someone telling that uh, it reminds her of days in Bombay when neighbors, everyone is to come together, distribute sweets, hoist flag, flags. Uh, so this distribution of sweets, why? Uh, why were people so happy uh, of, of this day? Uh, and why does the constitution matters? I will, I will try to explain why does it matter? Uh, why does it matter for the poorest of the people? Why does it matter for the most marginalized people? Why does it matter for Monul Hawk and his family? Uh, constitution over the period of time has, uh, has become a very complex document uh, where, you know, sitting, sitting judges of the Supreme Court or retired judges or a constitutional scholar talks about it, lawyers uh, talks about it. Uh, but you no, know, the constitution starts with we the people, the preamble starts with we the people. And the we, that has not been widened, I guess. You know, we should include everyone. Over the period of time, uh, that that the meaning of we has become very narrow uh, instead of wide, and which should include everyone. That was the dream of the of the founding fathers of our great nation. Uh, I would like to start with uh, what Ambedkar said on the Constitution, and I read, I quote, Mr. Uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. He said that if things go wrong under the new Constitution. The reason will not that we had a bad constitution. What we will have to say is that man was vile. Now, I very sincerely believe that our constitution is uh, an unparalleled document in, in the history of modern nation. Uh, because of the circumstances it was enacted, the people who were behind it, uh, the time it, you know, uh, it came into being, and uh, it has everything that we all should be proud of. But over the period of time, what has happened today, you know, we all talk about the India, uh, the India that has become today. This nation was built on the idea of justice, liberty, equality, and fraternity. The fraternity, it talks about in the preamble, it talks about fraternity assuring the dignity of individual. Now, dignity is one of my favorite word in the, in the entire constitution. Although it is not there in the, in the rest of the part, but is there in the, in the preamble. And the entire document, the constitution, I believe you know, it was enacted 
to to uphold this this idea of dignity uh i will give you one example of how dignity why dignity matters uh, this is before the nrc list was out because i am from assam so i will mostly talk about you know with reference to assam and give example of assam uh so i got this call uh, this would be before uh, before the publication of the final list this was after the final draft was out so there was an elderly person uh, he speaks very good english i was surprised to you know hear from him he called me up and he said aman you are a lawyer someone gave me your number please help me out i said so how do i help you he said my name did not come in the the nrc draft so what happened if your name is not there in the nrc draft you 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 had these people had an opportunity to apply again and those people who applied they will have to give their biometrics aman can you uh, aman can you quickly in a couple of sentences tell us also what nrc is because some of us may not be familiar with it okay 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 so nrc nrc is a citizenship list where everyone in assam had to apply into it to get their name and listed in this citizenship list this this includes everyone from uh, you know newborn to to, to everyone in, in, in the resident of assam applied to be to be enlisted in the citizenship list so that is nrc if your name is not there you will have to prove your citizenship before the foreigners tribunal so this is like you know Uh, the difference will be being an indian and not being an india it was so important so uh, i got this call from from this elderly person and he told me that he is a retired 77 year retired professor from dorong college dorong college is one of the finest uh, institution in in the entire northeast so he told me that i i need your help and i don't want to submit my biometrics i said sir because you have called me i am a lawyer i am requesting you that the best help that i can suggestion that i give it to you is that please go and submit your biometrics otherwise your name will not come because this has been approved by the supreme court so he this 77 year old man he broke down he was not consolable i mean i was trying to console him just please don't cry i mean i am there to help you out but you know uh, the rule is that you need to go and submit this uh, biometrics and he was repeatedly telling it hurts my dignity it hurts my dignity i i don't want to give my biometrics so he disconnected the call and uh, by then i was in the five six, five or six years of practice uh, before this I, i have heard this word dignity from from a victim i think once and it was ajmal haq who was, was an army officer and then after that i heard of one more time that was sanaullah who was also an army officer who was in detention center so i i start thinking about it that you know why was he repeatedly talking about dignity i try to put myself in his place now here is a person who is a mathematics professor and all his colleague must have been uh, asmis uh, who who was not called for this uh, biometrics hearing and here is a bengali hindu professor who was you know picked up dropped from the uh, uh, the list and he was forced to give his biometrics and he said that you know it hurts my dignity so that is what you know dignity matters we take it for granted and every day there are people whose citizenship is questioned who are sent to detention center is strip of the citizenship the way the foreigners tribunal treat these people is unimaginable and we don't talk about this we don't talk about the most important right that inherent right actually you know this is not only given by the constitution but because a person is born a person is born with that right right to live with dignity the constitution only confirmed it subsequent supreme court judgment only confirmed it that every human being has a constitutional fundamental right to live with dignity i will come later on to uh, the, the the ca and rc and why you know this, there is an attack on the on the very idea of the constitution now we all talk about upholding the constitutions how do you uphold the constitution who will uphold the constitution constitution doesn't work by itself it is an inert document it does not have hands and legs as as you know ambedkar says that you know one day the man has to be is the man is vile that those people have to be blamed if the constitution does not work now the institutions the custodian of the constitutions they will uphold the constitution the lawyers the bureaucrats 
they will uphold the constitution. We as a citizens, we will have to uphold the constitutions. But how much power do we have? These institutions have powers. I will give one example because I don't have much time. One example of a National Human Rights Commission. This is a human rights watchdog. And look who is heading the institution now. It is Mr. Arun Misra who praised uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi as a versatile, geni versatile genius. And uh, there was there was lots of complaint against him. People, human rights activists, they protested that why is this man heading the institution? This is the man who presided over the judgments like Justice Loya, who uh, in the in the Harin Pandya case and many other cases which went in favor of the government. And today that person is heading the National Human Rights Commissions. That is how institutions are destroyed. These are the institutions who should work for, for, for upholding the human rights. Look what happened, uh, what is happening in, in, in Assam today. There is encounters every day. There, are, there has been 32 encounters till now since the BGP government came to power. Ideally, ideally, uh, the NHRC should have issued a notice. It should have taken cognizance, but nothing of that sort have happened. Nothing of that sort have happened. When you pollute these institutions with your own people, this is what happened. Recently, there was a debate organized with the NHRC among some rifles and, 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 and security forces. And the topic of the debate was, is human, are, are human rights a stumbling block uh, to fight evils like terrorism and, and nationalism? This is the topic that was debated on the platform of the National Human Rights Commissions. I think you can well understand that how, what difference it made to uh, you know when an institution is polluted by people like who are who are, who are pro government <clears throat> in in assam the entire thing started long back uh, and it started with another institutions which was the uh, the superintendent of police where eviction happened this uh, this year uh, where where monal hawk was killed and his body was stomped in the mongoldoy district the, the SP, he sent a report that, you know, this area is infested with illegal migrants. The, the voter list showed, you know, increase of illegal migrants. These are the people who are being evicted today who migrated to these areas from other districts of Assam. They were shown as illegal migrants. That's how this entire movement started. When institutions like, like the, you know, the election commissions, the institutions like the superintendent of police, they do not work to uphold the constitution. Rather, they work for a vested interest, for a bandita against a certain set of peoples who are marginalized and work for peoples who are in the majority, for, for people in the power. That's when the you know, constitution dies. Constitution weeps every time it, the power is abused by the people in power. The entire issue got almost solved. In 1998, when you know the entire 90s decade was not about illegal migration in Assam, it, it was about uh, 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 militancy. It was about Ulfa. In 1998, the governor of Assam he came up with a report and say and he submitted. He it was it meant to support uh, submit it to the president of India. And in that report, bigoted report, I request you to read that report. Ask Mr. Ask Sina was the governor. In that report, he said that there will be a time when only one district of Assam, there will be you know, Assam is speaker. He also said that the Muslim dominated districts will one day demand to merge with Bangladesh. This is like 23rd year since that report. There is no such demand. And I say this is all responsibility. There will never be such demand. A few years back, I think four or five years back, uh, during the Independence Day, from this Dubri district, there was a photo which went viral. A nine-year-old boy, neck dip, a neck dip, he was saluting the Indian national flag. This is the area that SK Sina was talking about, that one day will demand to merge with Bangladesh. Now, this report was endorsed by the Supreme Court of India to set aside the IMDT Act and to bring in Foreigners Act, which is now, which is now governing the entire Foreigners Tribunal. In that judgment, 
the Honorable Supreme Court justified large-scale illegal migration and uh, uh, this uh, endorsed this entire xenophobic report in a way that entire uh, debate of illegal migration, which was rather solved, re was revived again. Now that judgment became the basis for NRC. On 2014, uh, in 2014, 17th of December, the Honorable Supreme Court ordered the, uh, the, the National Register of Citizens, which is the NRC, and the work started because of the order of the Supreme Court based on this SK Sinha report and based on this Sarvanda Sonwal judgment. Now, there was a five years long process. I was involved in this process and I saw people how every day they had sleepless night worrying about what will happen to the documentations. There were, there were around 50 suicides and there were people who had documents, but who did not understand the complexity of it and the committed suicide. This includes, you know, Hindus, Muslims, everyone. And one of the name that comes to my mind is Mirad Barandas, who incidentally happened to be a lawyer. He was a retired teacher and then he studied law. So he came to practice. Uh, he started practicing. He passed his metric in 1968. But because of this entire confusions that which document will be accepted, which not, and this entire debate, entire, you know, movement that, you know, this, uh, there are these numbers of foreigners, these people should be dropped, that should be included. He committed suicide. He was not an illiterate person. He was a lawyer. But because of the fear of losing citizenship, he had to commit suicide. There are people who committed suicide because they could not arrange documents for their children. They had document. But because birth certificate was, was initially uh, the only document for the children, subsequently there was an affidavit that was to be submitted by the uh, parents. But at that point of time, only birth certificate was a document that was applicable for children. And a lot of children, they did not have document. And there is one particular person who committed suicide. There was, I was in a meeting in, in Chirang district. And there was one person after the meeting, he came to me and he started saying that, you know, uh, he, was very, he, was, he was very scared. He said, you know, my wife will commit suicide. I said, no, what happened? Why should you come? Why will your wife commit suicide? He said, no, I am not, I am not able to trace my father's document. So I called a, a person, a volunteer, and said, help this person. There would be document because all 1951, 66 documents were uploaded in the NRC website. So I requested them that, you know, help them person. There would be somewhere or other the document will be available, uploaded in the NRC, uh, NRC web, uh, website. So these are the kind of fears that people went through. And this happened because you know, there was a narrative that there are millions of illegal migrants. And the Supreme Court came to endorse it. And look what happened. After five years of this process, how many people were excluded? 1.9 million people. And I say only 1.9 million people. Because even during the Assam movement, there were figures like two crore people, two crore illegal migrants. And people accepted it. When the entire population of the Northeast was not uh, two crore. 5 million, 6 million, every day you hear this kind of figures, that there are 5 million illegal migrants. Now, when the NRC list was published, the people who wanted NRC, the organization who wanted NRC, they started protesting against it. And guess why? Because they thought this number is too less. There should have been more people. The entire world was outraged because for them, 1.9 million is a very big uh, uh, very big figure because you know if you see the statelessness around the world uh, that number if you compare with assam if these people gets uh, you know declared as foreigner you know the assam's number will be the highest would be you know we are we, we we are actually sitting at the cusp of a major statelessness crisis but in assam the story was different people said we are not happy because the exclusion is not more and i will quote few uh, uh, statement of the Assam, current Assam chief minister, what he said, he says, we are not happy at all. This is after the uh, NRC was published on 20, 31st of August 2019. He says, uh, it seems that we some defic uh, deficiencies in the updation process. We believe that it is an incomplete NRC. This is after the NRC was completed under the monitoring of the Supreme Court and this Assam government who executed this entire process. He again says, and this is very scary. He says, we do not believe in this NRC. This is on 24th of September, 2019. 
He says, we, uh, the Assam chief minister says, the current chief minister, that we do not believe in this NRC. Under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Amit Shah, there will be another NRC. Those laughing now will cry for sure. And he says, and a law will also be passed to grant citizenship to those who came to India due to religious persecution. Now, subsequently, the CAA was brought to protect the Bengali Hindus who were excluded from the NRC. The government says we are protecting Bengali Hindus. Now, please tell me, this retired professor, I went to his home after the NRC list was published to meet him. His name came in the NRC, there is no doubt. His wife, who graduated from Dibrugarh University in 1968, her name has been excluded from the NRC because she lost those documents and could not get certified copy of this document on time. Now, please tell me, how will CA protect her? Why should CA protect her? I know n number of people, Bengali Hindus, who have all documents. But now the government says, we will protect you through CAA. Why should CAA protect them? They're already Indian citizens. Go and speak to them. They will have to say that, you know, we came, the rule has not been framed yet. But if ever the rule is framed, there was some kind of rumors going on that people will have to submit the document that, an affidavit that we came from Bangladesh, persecuted there uh, before 2014, 31st December, and we need citizenship. Should this uh, lady who's, who, who graduated from, was born in Assam, graduated from Dibrugarh University, should she submit an, a, 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 an affidavit saying that I came from Bangladesh? Erasing her entire history? Is CAA protecting uh, you know, rights of these Bengali Hindus? Do you think you know, this will protect their right to live with dignity? just because they will get their citizenship through CAA, it will not. You know, there could be organizations from Bengali Hindu organizations who are supporting CAA. I understand, I understand that, you know, if they don't support, they will have to go to the foreigners tribunal and then in, in the process, they might lose their citizenship. But go and speak to them. That, are they really happy with the CAA? Now what, the, the, the Citizenship Amendment Act, it says that people who came from Bangladesh, Pakistan, Afghanistans and who are non-Muslims will be granted citizenship. This is completely against the very idea of the constitutions. This is the first uh, legislations which is based on religion. We all talk about citizenship here, uh, Citizenship Amendment Act, the CAA here, but very sadly, we do not talk about NRC because that is what is affecting people more than anything else. Now, in the last three years, 30 people died in detention centers. And guess where their body were sent to? Their body were sent to Indian family. This is a phenomenon. One person declared citizen, uh, foreigners declared, uh, uh, detained in detention center, rest of the family are Indian citizens. There was a condition of indefinite detention because people who were detained were not being deported. The only intention to deport people is to uh, detain people is to deport to the country of origin. Now, when you declare your own citizen as foreigner, how do you deport these people? It is not possible to deport. I will give you one example how a person was declared as foreigner. Let me give example of Sanaullah. Sanaullah is an army officer whose case we are defending before the High Court now. He was declared. He was accused of being a foreigner without any investigation whatsoever. This is a modus operandi. Fair investigation is a fundamental, uh, fundamental right. The border police, the election commission, they don't conduct any kind of investigation. In, 19, in, in 2009, he was marked as, as illegal migrant. On that day, he was on duty as an Indian army officer in Manipur. Look at the irony. For a counter-insurgency operation called Hifazat. Basically, Hifazat means security. Basically, he was sec when he was securing his country, the Assam border police was accusing him of being an illegal migrant. They forged his thumb impression where he said, you know, that I am a Bangladesh. They completely manufactured that part. And in 2018, he received a notice. He went to the foreigners tribunal. He submitted 26 documents, not one, two, 26 documents. Here I, I see people talking about undocumentation. Undocumentation is not a problem in Assam. The problem is undermining these institutions. The disregard for the rule of law. 
and uh, let me explain why how does this disregard us on those 26 document among those 26 documents one document was issued by the president of india because he was a junior commissioned officer in the indian army now the tribunal says on that on that document they rejected the document by the president uh, i think abdul kalam apj abdul kalam issued the document guess what she says the document the tribunal says that the issuing authority did not appear before me now let me break this down a 10 year experienced lawyer who became a foreigners tribunal member had the audacity to say that the president of india should come before her to check the veracity of the documents now judicially speaking the tribunal or any judicial forum should have taken judicial cognizance of this document according to the evidence act this is the modus operandi if an indian army officer can be declared as a foreigner you can understand what will happen to other people now you know as a citizen i'm a lawyer i fight cases but then as a citizen how do we work to to uphold the constitutions what we are trying to do that sambidhan kendra concept the constitution centers one of the idea was to take constitution to the people to widen the meaning of the we which is starts because you know in the we the people the people is missing there the meaning of the we is narrowing day by day and the, the most important the, the important thing that features in our lecture with people where we try to you know promote constitutional literacy is the right to dignity everyone when you insult them they feel insulted but then to right to live with dignity is our constitutional right that's what we explain it to people you know people should not take this for granted it is their right and they should fight for it and now we explain it to them in the simple words now when these people are accused of being foreigners illiterate people poor people they don't have any place to go in the process they don't you know they can't afford lawyers they lose their citizenship sambidhan kendras are primarily a you know legal clinic so we are creating access to justice that's how we will protect the right to citizenship that is one secondly we are uh, increasing this constitutional literacy thirdly as 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 ambedkar said that you know you can only blame the vile man how do we put people on those imp- in those imp- important position the custodian of the constitution so we uh, this process we are trying to start it once i go back we will start this process firstly we will you know uh, there are a lot of drop out in the rural areas we will try to target m- people from marginalized communities children who are prone to drop out to to give them coaching and try to send them to uh, jnbs and and kendra with the uh, basically jawahar nagar the vidyalaya which is the finest you know central institutions where the education is completely free our second layer would be this is the most important thing and one of my dream project is to send more student from rural areas to national law schools there is an exam called clat through which you go you know enter national law school i believe that we need more lawyers more judges who can fight to uphold the constitution i understand this is not a one day you know two day process it will take time my dream is that you know in the next 20 years we will at least have people from assam in all national law schools and i believe that if the custodian of the constitutions do not care for the constitution then the constitutions will be reduced to a dead letter and slowly and steadily that is the process which is going on and if you do not act together tragically that will that is exactly what will happen i would like to end my my speech with what ambedkar again said on you know last sitting of the constituent assembly and he said however good a constitution may be it is it is sure to turn out bad because those who are called to work it happen to be bad lot however bad a constitution may be it may be turn out to be good if those who are called to work it happen to be a good lot now we have a good constitution we need this good lot people and we need to increase this population the good lot population that's what the dream of ambedkar that's what the dream of our founding fathers the process is long the dream is big but i think it is not impossible thank you so much thank you aman like that was a very moving and informative talk
uh, we all can thank Aman. So the floor is open for questions. Um, so uh, you can also post your question on the chat and based on like uh, the similarity of the questions, we'll club them together maybe. Or you can, uh, are we unmute, asking people to unmute as well? You can, you can raise hand and I, I will go in the order that you raise hands. Hi, Bikash. Uh, uh, I forgot how to raise hand here, but can I ask the question? Oh, sure. Uh, uh, thanks a lot, Aman. I mean, it was such a wonderful, uh, you know, uh, speech to hear on the Republic Day. And uh, and it's really, I mean, whatever you said, uh, it really like pulls at the heart. And uh, just asking for people to prove their citizenship when this is not done in any other state of India, imposing this on Assam and then targeting minorities. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just something ridiculous. Uh, I also wanted to ask particularly, you know, like the minority religions and minority groups, what do they think about this act and, and how do they feel? Uh about the citizenship amendment act so uh, and the nrc see i will a uh, lot of people accuse me of supporting nrc i will tell you what you know when nrc was ordered uh, the marginalized community everyone supported it guess why we supported it and we work uh, for it because we thought that let it be the last last uh, so-called investigative process and after that let there be no politicization of these uh, citizenship issues you talk to any people of bengal uh, bengali origin either bengali muslim or bengali hindu in some point of time they have been uh, abused of being a bangladeshi including me and those are one of the abuses that you know entirely changed the trajectory of my career we thought that let there be a final process after that this stigma should not be there no one should be accused of being ab accused and abused of being an illegal migrant. We imposed our faith on the Supreme Court. I literally went to all these, you know, uh, minority dominated district and told them have faith in the Supreme Court. Today, if I, if I go, they will lynch me. That you are the one who told us to have faith in the Supreme Court. And it's been more than two years now. And the NRC has not been finalized. Now the government is talking about redoing this NRC again re-verification of this NRC. The government have, su have submitted a, an, an application before the Supreme Court to re-verify the NRC, NRC list. So this will basically, you know, re um, you know, start the process again. And this is after these five, six years of process. Now this is about NRC. Everyone supported it because they wanted a closure. Okay. After supporting, we, I now feel betrayed by everyone, betrayed even by the Supreme Court of India. And about CAA, Look, Bengali Hindus have legitimate concern. If they are not, you know, if they are not protected by the, the CAA, they will lose their citizenship before the foreigners travel. Of course, now it is only the Muslims. There are the six scheduled areas where there are Bengali Hindus also who will have to go before the foreigners tribunal to prove their citizenship. But majority Bengali Hindus who are out of the NRC will be protected by the CAA. But at what cost? Like I explained, at the cost of the dignity, at the cost of their uh, entire uh, uh, history. Like this, this, this elderly lady who was born and brought up here, graduated in 1968. She will have to say that, you know, I am, a, I am a refugee from Bangladesh. I don't know how is it protecting the rights, but because, you know, it is protecting the citizenship, there is a support, of course, from the Bengali Hindu communities. And it is not that, you know, that, that you know, Muslim community is against it, uh, because it, it, it does not affect them. It affects in the sense that, you know, they are the only community who will have to go to the, before the foreigners tribunal. My concern is, uh, uh, is that it is violating uh, the, the basic tenets of the constitution. That is why I am against the CAA. At, at, you know, at some point of time, uh, you might 
hold me guilty for this but i feel good for bengali hindus at least they are getting the citizenship but again at the cost of the dignity even they are not happy that you know they will have to compromise the dignity to get the citizenship so that is and what the feeling among minority in india is so in this one follow up question and what what about people who lose uh, citizenship and there is no protection oh like this million people or uh, who uh, that you said what happens to them so there is a you know there are there are there is there is a woman called um, um, momiron nessa uh momiron nessa was a, uh, marked as a devotee again without investigation you know she could not pay her lawyer her lawyer didn't fight her case well she was she was declared a foreigner in 2010 she was detained she had three minor children the youngest of them was 2 years old and she was pregnant with her fourth child which she got aborted in the detention center she uh, lost her case in the high court in the supreme court she was detained for 9 years in detention center her husband he was bedridden from the day she went to detention center he just met once and he said i can't go to detention center to meet her because i can't see her behind the bars google her name momiron nasa you will find her story her testimony the we uh, you know because we are helping her because she has gold bladder and all we assisted one of the samvidhan kendra in kolgasia uh, actually uh, sponsored her uh, operation also uh, in, um, during pandemic the youngest son who was 2 years old he could not recognize the mother after 9 years now her case is uh, has been dismissed by the supreme court she has no right now we went to the supreme court last year uh, where you know the detention period was reduced to 10 uh, two years before that harshmandar filed a petition where you know the the detention period was reduced to three years after that this indef- indefinite detention came into uh, uh, came down uh, but then you know this momiron nessa people like her they have to go before the police station every week every 15 days to say that you know i uh, i'm here i have not gone anywhere and she has no right although our constitution says that article 14 and article 21 applied applies to both citizen and non citizen tell me <laughs> tell me we need to fight for some basic right for even indian citizen forget about uh, people who have been rendered stateless they have no right absolutely they will, they, they they are vulnerable to abuse you know even indian citizens look at what you know i think somnath da mentioned about moinul haq how you know institutions uh, um, th- there were no notices sent uh, just 12 hours before eviction notices were sent and when people came to protest they fired at people and uh, what is the justification of the government even before we filed a pil before the uh, our, our legal team in assam filed a pil before the guwahati high court the legal uh, there is no legal argument before uh, by that uh, advocate general they are the advocate general says that wherever i go to this area i feel like i am in bangladesh this is the kind of argument that comes from the advocate general even the citizen do not have right they are accused of being foreigner they say you know these are not you know citizen enough forget about people who have been declared as foreigners they have no right absolutely they are stateless people they can't be deported because this is the country only country they know so constitutions how important it is you need to go and sit with them talk to them even during pandemic through uh, you know a few friends we were trying to distribute uh, 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 rations and our target was people whose names are not there in the nrc or who are out of detention center guess why because the people who are stateless whose citizenship is in a strip they are not entitled to this uh, uh, the welfare schemes the pds public distribution system because they don't have this ration card even you know today uh, the people who have been excluded from the nrc their biometrics have been taken and their aadhar has been blocked for everything you need an aadhar so they are facing problem so our uh, when we distributed ration for these people our we we basically targeted people you know who don't have ration card and all when you do not get this basic when you cannot be a beneficiary of this public distribution system forget about healthcare now government of india has has uh, you know facilities like atal amrit uh, you know where you know if you are even uh, suffering from cancer you are entitled to these uh, government benefits these people are not entitled to any benefit tomorrow if you go to school do you think their children will be given equal opportunities no 150000 people have already been declared as foreigner they are stateless 
1.9 million people, they are not stateless till now, but they will have to go and appear before the foreigners tribunal. And I said, uh, and I told you how, you know, the institution of foreigners tribunal has been compromised totally. If they go before the foreigners tribunal, most of them will be declared as for, uh, foreigner under this government. And you can imagine what will happen to them. You know, I just want to mention there was a person called Jagadguru Parmahansa. He on 20, uh, 2nd of October, he threatened that, you know, I will take a Jal Samadhi if India is not declared as a Hindu Rashtra. And guess what his demand was for Hindu Rashtra? That Muslims and Christians should be uh, uh, terminated of the citizenship. The road to Hindu Rashtra doesn't go through completely amending the constitution. It goes through termination of citizenship. It goes through this NRC. It goes through this so-called re-verification of the NRC. They don't need to amend the constitution completely. Is, is this article 21, 14, dignity, equality, is this has been removed? No, it is there, but it is being undermined. The institution are not following it. Now, if they succeed in stripping citizenship of a million people or 5 million people, that is de facto Hindu Rashtra. There will be a problem like Kashmir, a problem like Babri, Ayodhya, you know, issue, which they are tried, trying to manufacture, another issue. So road to Hindu Rashtra doesn't, I don't think it will go through completely, uh, you know, amending the constitution. The road to Hindu Rashtra goes through citizenship issues. And I think this man, Jagadguru Parmahansa, don't take his statement as an in isolation. This is the, you know, undercurrent that exists. That is strip citizenship of, of million people. And we will have, you know, so much of problem that it will be a defect to Hindu Rashtra by itself. Thanks, Saman. So Thanks, I see, I see Rasheen uh, raised her hand. So Rasheen, you can go ahead with your question. Um, thank you, Aman. Um, it's very difficult to talk right now, but um, so uh, you talked about that if you are not in the NRC list, then you have to appear before an, uh, uh, tribunal and, and prove your citizenship. Um, would you mind telling what are the documents which are needed um, to prove the citizenship and why a lawyer is needed in that process? Uh, see, firstly about documentation. So the law in Assam is that anyone who came to Assam before, uh, within 1 1 1966 to 25th March 1971, their voting rights will be curtailed by 10 years and they will be regarded as citizen. They will have to register. So basically, you will have to submit document before 1st of January 1966. So when we are approached by people to fight these cases, we make sure that there is a voter list of 1965 or any land document before that. And then there is a, uh, a continuity of the document. When I started fighting these cases in 2013-14, I, I used to submit four documents. And we used to we win cases. And like I said, I gave example of uh, Sanaullah. He submitted 26 documents. Still, we can't win cases now. Because the tribunal says you need to submit document of every year. Say your father's name is enlisted in 1965 voter list. 70, 60, 75, 80, after every five years, you need to, you need to show there is a continuity that you have been here. Now, there is a the logic of the tribunal is that more document, more variations. I request you to check your 1965, 1966 document of your father or your grandfather and see if the names were mentioned correctly. Uh, Amnesty came up with a report called design to exclude you will if you you will find if you google you will find the report and there was a case mentioned where a, a person whose name was Aubakar Siddiq he went to Jorhat to work and you know modus operandi without an investigation uh, sent to tribunal he submitted 1966 document where his, where his grandfather name is A F E R Afer Ali 1970s his father document where his grandfather name in the father's uh, column is written as a P E R. Now guess what the tribunal says. The tribunal says A F E R. A P E R is not same person. For one word, that person lose, lost his citizenship. This is modus operandi. 
if you read you know i'm here uh, uh, for my masters but still i have to go through you know over the weekend my team send me this um, read petitions to go through uh, recently uh, a, a judge uh, magistrate he gave up his job and joined us so my work burden will be less now because he is leading our team there in assam but you know it gives me i i feel so angry every time i read a foreigners tribunal order i feel that the my most beloved document the constitution of india is being slaughtered foreigners tribunal has become slaughter house of indian constitution when you can strip citizenship for this ridiculously minor enemies whose citizenship is safe so there is no there is no list of document that you need to submit but over the period of uh, the law is that you need to submit before uh, 1971 safe side before 1966 but you need to show the continuity even if you show like you know uh, uh, like sanaulla army officer 26 document you might be declared as a foreigner so there is no set of document but you know from 1966 you need to submit these uh, documents uh, what was your next question i uh, so um, no i i was just wondering because say if i have to prove my citizenship in the united states i need to provide my birth certificate or yeah. or um, or my naturalization certificate or something so i i was just wondering what are these documents they are asking but as you said they they yeah. are asking since 1966 voter card so then my follow up question is what if nobody somebody has never registered for voting right if, what if they are not in voter list because they never went and and gave their name for voting register and what if people are migrant and working at different places yeah. from so there let me, let me let me give an example i think your i, I remember your next question was uh, why do they need lawyer see they need lawyer let me answer this first they need lawyer because see uh although the the uh, you know the government have said re- recently after the nrc list was out that you know even they can be uh, um, even paralegal paralegals or any relatives can come and fight their cases but it is not possible you need lawyers good lawyers and that is one reason why we you know train lawyers uh, uh, to develop their skills because you know in these cases uh, this evidence law is involved although if you see the history of tribunalization tribunals were made to be a you know people friendly court not to follow the stringent uh, rules of evidence law but because there are public document private document i will give you an example you also mentioned about uh, you know that if someone is not enrolled in the voter list so this both this question uh, will be answered uh, by this um, answer so one of the vulnerable uh, group is of course the women it is very difficult for them most of the lawyer you know uh, if they find a case where you know women uh, a woman has has been accused of being foreigner they will say oh oh it's a women case so they 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 don't get the answers in why i will tell you so most of the women from marginalized communities they get married before turning 18 years of age this is that is the minimum age to vote this age was 21 before 1989 now when you get married so young age before turning 18 you go to your matrimonial home after getting married at your matrimonial home your your name is enrolled in the voter list with your husband because there is a column called father mother husband not with the father now citizenship is proved through parents the most important document to prove citizenship is the voter list now for a woman that document is gone because your name is you cannot show linkage with your uh, father the vote in the voter list your name is enrolled with your husband it becomes very difficult for the woman to prove her citizenship in absence of the voter list because voter list is a public document you don't have to call the issuing authority to prove the veracity in absence what document do you give by chance if she went to school she might have some school document that is not a public document a private document the headmaster of the institution should come with the entire register of that year when she went to the school to show that i issued this document this is the back end document and uh you know this is how i am proving the authenticity of this document another document is a gaugura certificate the village headman certificate now if even the gaugura comes before the tribunal but for some reason or other his deposition will be rejected saying that he do, he do not have authority he did not mean the uh, record and all these things most of the women i people are poor even if they have land women are mostly deprived of you know their property from their father 
even if they have the property, the name, you know, through the inheritance they get property, that document should also be proved by the issuing authority, who is the circle officer. Now, in the entire process, a lot of evidence law is involved. That is why you need lawyer. And that also, you know, says, speaks volume why, you know, women who, uh, whose name is enrolled in the voter list, but not with the father, with the husband, and, and they lose the most important document, which is the, the, the voter list. If a person is not enrolled, if the parents, you know, we find those cases also, that they do not have a 1966-70 document, not necessarily they were foreigners, but they were not enrolled at that point of time. For them, you know, it's, it's very difficult. If there is no land document, there is virtually no document to prove that you are a citizen of India. Absolutely no document. So enrolling in the voter list is one of the most important thing. That is why maybe in Assam, you know, uh, more than Eid, I see people going to, to their home from Guwahati or from urban areas to vote. Because, you know, there is a rumor, if you do not vote, your name will be cut off from the voter list. So voting is very important. And one of the reasons is that, you know, they don't want to lose their citizenship. Thank you. So... So maybe we'll take one last question. So I see. Um, so Harish and Sohinidhi. Um, so maybe Sohinidhi first because I see her hand first. Um, maybe you can ask like one short question, both of you, and we'll close the Q and A with that. Yeah. So thank you so much. It's a very. It was a very good uh, informative talk. I'm from West Bengal and. West Bengal also has some of this immigration from Bangladesh for a long time. Do you know anything about any of this kind of issue? I'm not aware of. So what about things happening there? Okay. Should I answer this first? Maybe we'll yeah. take Harish if he has similar question. Okay. Harish? Hi. Yeah. I'm under the name Harish today. My name oh. is Nupur Sahai. I'm a psychologist. Hi, Aman. It's good to see you. Hope your master's is going well in Texas. And um, thank you for that wonderful talk. Um, and Republic Day uh, greetings to everyone here. You know, as a psychologist, I just can't help but ask about the mental health impact of internalized oppression. You've mentioned suicide a few times. And I was just thinking about like they talk about women, especially women from marginalized backgrounds being thrice oppressed. Um, and I just can't imagine you know, what that process is like psychologically to be constantly oppressed. I'm just curious if you could speak to some of the mental health needs of the entire community, because, you know, in psychology, we talk about how the voice of the oppressor gets internalized. You mentioned dignity. I was going to also mention shame and how that can get internalized as I'm not enough. And I'm asking for too much when you're asking for is your basic dignity yeah uh, so to uh, answer the first questions about west bengal uh, thankfully bgp did not come to power this time in west bengal so at least in west bengal with regard to citizenship people are safe but you know the problem arises when uh, people from west bengal west bengal come to assam and uh, there is one one case where uh, uh, you know this person from West Bengal, he's a, uh, his, his parents are Hindi speaking. And he came in 1995, uh, uh, acute, you know, mark as D voter. And uh, he submitted one document of 1965 uh, from West Bengal, from, from Calcutta. Uh, I, I forgot the name of the area from the proper Metro Calcutta. And that document was rejected because the tribunal came to a conclusion that uh, because the document, the custodian is the national archive. Uh, uh, because according to the evidence law, the custodian of the of the document should issue the document. Because National Archive was not the original custodian, that is why his 1965 voter list was rejected. And that person was in detention and he came out from detention center after uh, more than two years in detention after we filed the case before the Supreme Court. So that is the kind of problem that you know people from West Bengal has to face. Uh, there is another person uh, who again, we, we filed a petition before the Supreme Court. The case is still going on. You know, he uh, came, uh, um, you know, he don't have any document, actually. He came from West Bengal in 19, around 1987. But because of this entire issue, he had to, uh, you know, his citizenship was stripped. 
so the problem is not in west bengal itself but when people from west bengal comes here then uh, you know the, the uh, there is a problem uh with regard to the mental health issue see i mean uh it is quite obvious i mean you know when when there is an a, a normal fir against you uh you understand that uh, you know what kind of problem you might face when there is a case of citizenship it's like your entire existence is being questioned it is a matter of life and death if citizenship goes away citizenship is is the right to have rights that's what you know hannah arden's articulated it's a gateway to have all other rights if that is lost you are you are mr nobody i mean you don't have any 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 you know political membership you don't have any rights although you know we say that you know article 14 21 is applied uh, applies to everyone but in practice it does not let in all i mean um, foreigners uh, so called you know stateless people not even um, indian citizens enjoy this right equally so i will i will try to explain give an example noor and sahira picked up by border police without an investigation their case was sent to the foreigners tribunal rickshaw puller in guwahati they could not pay their lawyer declared as foreigner picked up sent to detention center they had no money nothing they came to us we from our organization the student liberty initiative we fought the case uh, first we you know went to the high court set aside the ex parte order and then the case was uh, transferred to the foreigners tribunal uh, luckily it was in guwahati so our entire team worked with it and uh, he is such a naive person noor is such a naive person and one of the the sweetheart person you will ever meet him i mean so he when he was brought by police uh, from detention center after he was by then he was in 18 month detention center both noor and sahira along with his two minor children shahzahan and uh, hasina shahzahan was uh, is now 6 year old hasina is 4 year old they were all in detention center so you know uh, i was sitting in the in the in the baranda of the tribunal and he was there uh, and there is a washroom nearby in 5 minute he at least went five time to wash his hands he was so restless he was very restless i mean he was constantly doing something or other i was so worried i said because you know his evidence was pending i mean he he will have to depose before the tribunal luckily we got him released that day and then we took a little longer date so that you know you can become little stable right and slowly and steadily he he became a normal person finally and that day when he came out of detention center and i was very worried seeing him he was constantly you know doing something or other as if you know he have lost his balance and going constantly washing his hand constantly washing his hand i lost the count after 5 minute how many time he went and washed his hand so this is one person who was in detention center there are, i like i said 30 people and died in detention not necessarily because of any uh, 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 you know they say that natural death obviously natural people will die there naturally they will die see when a person is jailed for 20 years that might that person might have some kind of sense that i know i committed a crime i am here because of my you know whatever i did the crime i did but the people who are detained in detention center after their citizenship is stripped they did no wrong act whatsoever out of the blue they are detained in detention center A lot of people you know 60% cases are by ex parte order because they couldn't afford lawyer or the notice was not sent to them so they have no idea about any pro- procedure all of a sudden in the in the in the dark night police came and picked them up and put them in detention center many people didn't come out because they died there people who were there for 9 10 years look you know their mental condition is i cannot comprehend but even people during the nrc i will give my example my sister's name was not there in the uh, in the first list and i was one of those lawyer who was going around assam explaining people what document will be required getting call every minute from people because my number was with lot of people that you know what should we do how to fill up the form but in the second list my sister name was there we were very worried and my father in the dining table our conversation was you know um, thank god your sister's name is there otherwise we would have been very worried when the list was out because we had no idea that you know our name will be there or not not there i was literally you know it was supposed to be out by 12 am the midnight but it didn't work then the, you know internet i think the website collapsed we were everyone i had a sleepless night despite the fact that we have all documents so about this entire mental trauma 
i think you know uh, uh, it it has taken heavier toll on people in the last few years i have seen people's productivity going down people literally you know there is to be now people has you know two years have gone but mo the thing they used to talk in the morning in the nukkar and all is the nrc people's productivity literally came down not because they were running from here to there but because they were also under immense mental trauma now people whose names are out i i get lot of call you know very often uh, from people and they ask you know kab shuru hoga hamara hearing and all i have no answer imagine about them their entire families there are some family entire family names are dropped and not not because they don't have document but because their document match with someone else and then you know in the hearing one doc one set of document was dropped so with regard to mental trauma if people can go to the extent of committing suicide you know what more can i say i mean i don't i cannot i cannot articulate that thing actually well about the mental health issue thank you thank you aman yeah i was just also adding that after the initial trauma the whole process of being dehumanized and degraded that further seals in the trauma in the body yeah thank you thanks aman um i think we should all thank aman again for such a moving talk and patiently answering our questions yes thank i agree you. thank you this is mohan mohan bhagat and i want to thank our speaker the sad part is that what he has told us is that in some sense it's an existential problem the government is essentially telling you that from our point of view you don't exist at all since we have decided that you do not exist unless you can put together large number of lawyers and judges and so on all this stuff about documents and so on is just a bunch of hooey forget it you don't we don't recognize your existence then that is it the various cases that we have heard about literally just make one want to cry and apologize to them but as our friend has pointed out it is going to take tens of lawyers tens of judges tens of those who are not committed to the present government to remind people that the constitution of india is still alive and if people do not defend it if lawyers do not defend it if judges do not defend it then forget it then the india of our dream ceases to exist god bless you all could everyone turn their video on uh i think we can all express our I don't know what to say. Gratitude um, for people like um, Aman and the others working in the Constitution Kendras. Um, you mentioned that a judge had, had recently joined you. Um, it's it's uh, heartening to know that people who are being left out are aren't um, aren't being forgotten. Obviously. people should not be left out and um and with the work that that you're doing um we hope that that day will will soon be realized um sorry i just had to say that uh, bikash so so kiran and do you want um uh, yeah i mean not as a question necessarily but can i just make a couple of comments yes yeah uh, so i wanted to say that uh, basically on on i mean since this is a republic day and uh, aman has uh, so <coughs> clearly brought forth that 
uh, the uh, i mean when when there's an attack on the basic citizenship itself uh, then that is the road to actually making really really fundamental changes that uh, completely undermine our constitution and um, uh, you know the fact that we are a secular country and so on uh so i think that this is something that uh, you know on on the republic day all of us need to resolve uh that uh, we need to be uh, you know a uh, very proactive in countering uh, you know all these kind of um, uh, things you know the ca nrc is one uh, uh, you know one way uh, in which uh, the constitution is being undermined there are many other ways in which the constitution is being undermined so we need to proactively work against all that and also be very uh, vigilant and uh, um uh, uh, you know eternal vigilance is the price of uh, freedom and democracy uh, so uh, uh, i i think that uh, e- even on very f- uh, 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 in, in anything that we work on like for example even the whole covid uh, pandemic uh, i think that apart from the work uh, you know of helping uh, people who are affected by covid or you know to protect them wearing masks or vaccines or whatever uh, actually the covid pandemic also resulted in a huge assault on ba- people's basic fundamental rights uh, and uh, part of that is the whole right to health and access to health and all that and part of that is even just basic right to freedom of movement and everything uh, through the brutal lockdowns and so on uh, i think in all this also uh, basically once again it exposes uh how um, uh, actually the constitutional values of uh, freedom equality and so on uh, have only a surface penetration uh, for unfortunately for a majority of the people uh, so uh, apart from what the government or those in power do uh, which of course you know are high degree of oppression and uh, you know you can call it by whatever you know qua- uh, fascism or quasi fascism whatever uh but i think we also need to be concerned about the uh, readiness of people to accept uh such things from the government and uh, that i think is actually uh, a, a a very weak point you know uh, at this point so uh, anything which actually uh, strengthens the ability of people common people uh to say that we are not going to accept this to say that you know this is wrong uh, you know doesn't matter you win with a huge majority or whatever it is you have the parliament in your hand still this is not acceptable because there is something which is above uh, the elected government which is the constitution right uh, so i think that uh, kind of a thing is what we need to really work towards and like aman said it's a, it's a, it's a long haul it's a huge uh, 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 you know challenge um so one of the things i think which the recent farmers movement uh, for example uh, established is that uh, there is still a right to protest in our country because for a lot of us even uh, you know activists who are fighting on various things even basic right to protest is also actually under uh, a big question because in hyderabad if you want to do a protest you need to get a police permission uh, that person uh, even in the dharna chowk i mean there is only a designated area called dharna chowk where you can do a protest and even for that dharna chowk uh, you need to get a police permission and the police doesn't give you permission until the morning of the protest so therefore you actually uh, are totally hamstrung as to you know how you organize it and how many people can come and so on and there are uh, you, uh, you know prior arrests uh, once any protest is declared in hyderabad uh, to prevent people from districts to come in there are actually prior arrests which happen so all these kind of things are you know completely assault on basic freedom fundamental rights which are guaranteed in the constitution uh, so uh, 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 you know the, the farmers movement for example established that you know you can block a national highway uh, for uh, uh, you know uh, one and a half years uh, uh, if the uh, you know government is basically uh, not ready to uh, do uh, whatever are the basic things that they are supposed to do um including you know consult people when uh, you are making a law uh, right so uh, i think that we all need to uh, you know irrespective of what the cause is irrespective of what the uh, uh, you know particular issue is uh, upholding the fundamental rights and uh, uh, you know including right to protest and so on should be like at the top of our uh, agenda in whatever way uh, you know we are able to do that uh, thanks that's what i wanted to say Uh, so today i mean just on on a uh, on a more personal note uh, today uh, you know there are a couple of other uh, meetings also which are happening one is uh, you know there is a whole process of uh, 
uh, universal uh, appraisal of uh, you know how the human rights situation is uh, uh, in in all the countries across the world it's called upr and uh, uh, you know it happens every 5 years uh, under the un uh, human rights council uh, uh, thing and uh, so, so many of us are participating today there's a meeting to discuss about the situation in telangana uh, so a lot of this i think human rights processes uh if uh, uh, they are also uh, uh, you know circulated to all the aid partners and get more and more people to participate in that so i think that that is at one level we can make that kind of intervention uh and uh, also another thing which uh, i've been trying to organize is just a get together online get together with young people uh with uh, people uh, with, with with school going and uh, you know like early college going students just within my extended family uh on republic day to talk about uh, uh you know to co- talk about what rule of law means what constitution means to uh, you know w- w- what their thinking is i think we need to really engage with the young uh, generation uh, so that they uh, grow up actually internalizing some of these uh, uh, values uh, otherwise they may actually be uh, uh, seeing the world from a whole different lens than what we were like growing up in let's say 70s 80s and uh, so on in india thank you thanks kiran uh, thanks for the thanks for sharing your thoughts so aman do you have any last remark to make no Before i just you... want to thank everyone for listening to me and uh, yeah that's all i want to say i think i have spoken enough thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to speak it's an honor <laughs>